I'd love if you say you feel some hope through it Don't worry about a hater cause they all clueless And when they had their chance man they all blew it Sold your soul and it wasn't even gold Judas Nah, that's so foolish Asking me if I'm kosher and I ain't Jewish Misconceptions are reality And symbolism that they can't believe So wear your halo like a canopy And you can open up your mind like a canopy and be aware that you can't appease them Summer, spring, fall, yeah, all the seasons These hypocrites, they can't stand to reason Rather stick to the lies and deceiving Sometimes I feel like I could take a stroll through the park After dark, just me and my music My dreams be all loose and my headphones on all the static I'm muted This the song make I wake up the whole nation Can no play that song make I shake up the whole life Can't stop the Like we 
What is this kind of love, yeah? Frequencies buzzing. Now why you gone, your love, yeah? Maybe you're from another planet. Or maybe I was designed for you. If she jumped, then I jump. Wherever she go, I go in. And no mountain too high. Any river I cross in. If she say left, then it's left. There ain't no second guessing. When she wrong, she's still right. She just want my attention Anywhere I go, I find myself back to you, yeah Love it when you ain't just darling, you lead the way, yeah Break up just to make up, you know that type of shit, yeah Hold your kisses, ransom till you have it your way, yeah I never had it like you, boo uh. Wet till it's splash it too good And when they had their chance, man, they all blew it Sold your soul and it wasn't even gold, Judas Nah, that's so foolish Asking me if I'm kosher and I ain't Jewish Misconceptions are reality 
and symbolism that they can't believe. So wear your halo like a canopy, and you can open up your mind like a canopy. And be aware that you can't appease them Summer, spring, fall, yeah, all the seasons These hypocrites, they can't stand to reason Rather stick to the lies and deceiving Sometimes I feel like I could take a stroll through the park After dark, just me and my music My dreams be all loose and my headphones on all the static I'm muted This the song make I wake up the whole day Can no play that song make I shake up the whole night Can't stop the way
Welcome to the Trinidad and Tobago Fashion Company, Fashion TT, Virtual Fashion Trade Mission. Showcasing 11 of Trinidad and Tobago's top fashion companies, Charu Lochan Das, Mei Ling, Claudia Pegas, Heather Jones International, Individual Aesthetic, Genesis Swimwear, Neha Karina, The Hideout Clothing, Designer J, Angelique, and The Cloth. In this mission, we are happy to host buyers and consumers from various countries in the world, the United States of America, Africa, Brussels, India, Quebec, the United Kingdom, among other territories worldwide. And now, to officially open our virtual platform, the General Manager of the Trinidad and Tobago Fashion Company, Fashion TT, Fashion please, welcome please welcome Lisa Marie, Lisa Marie Daniel. Marie Daniel. Good morning, everyone. I would like to recognize Sanita, the Honorable Paula Gobiskun, Minister of Trade and Industry, Mr. Jason Lindsay, Chairman of the Trinidad Tobago Fashion Company, Directors of the Fashion TT and Creative TT Boards, Mr. Danra Tarabasad, General Manager, Client Services, Export TT, Dr. Sabita Singh, CEO, Cardinal Services, LLC, Heads of Trinidad and Tobago's Diplomatic Missions, esteemed speakers and panelists, our talented global designers, the hardworking Fashion TT and Creative TT teams, local and international audiences, and special members of the media. The Trinidad and Tobago Fashion Company, charged with driving the business development and export activity of the local fashion industry, collaborates with an estimated 200 designers annually. We plan and execute a series of capacity building programs specially designed to support and improve the operational efficiency of fashion companies based on their business development stage. At the pinnacle of these programs is our global value chain tier of designers who are export ready and therefore are the most poised to penetrate international markets in line with the aesthetic and niche. Today, I am proud to announce that within this virtual trade mission, we have 11 of the top designers within TNT showcasing their beautiful products, as Sham would have mentioned in the introduction. Each company has their own personalized exhibitor booths, which are now open. We will be hosting two virtual trade missions annually, presenting the work of our sector to local and international audiences for the purpose of building awareness, developing buyer and consumer relationships, and to accordingly continue to bolster revenues in this sector. We are pleased to have partnered with our fellow state agency, Export TT, via the Export Booster Initiative, and Houston Consultancy Cardinal Services LLC in making this event a reality. The state-of-the-art 3D platform you are navigating through today will be online for six months from today. Therefore, the public will have the opportunity to peruse, order, and purchase from our designers within an extended time frame. I would like to especially thank our private sector partners in this initiative, Shamji Ali of Market Moguls, The Guardian Media Group, Dr. Lotus Rich, and the host of the Greatness Engineering Hour. Hope you enjoy our program today, which comprises of panel conversations with fashion icons such as Professor Andrew Ramroo and Richard Young, moderated by our very own Fashion TT's project manager, Aisha Stewart. And I am sure you will be absolutely captivated by the mission. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa Marie. And now to show us around this virtual site and share some tips on housekeeping as we move around today is our virtual trade virtual mission, trade consultant, mission consultant, consultant and CEO, and CEO of, Cardinal of Cardinal Services, Services and, Solutions, and Solutions, Dr. Sabita Dr. Bidesi Singh. Bidesi Singh. Thank you very much, Lisa. Good morning, Honorable Minister Gopi Schoon, distinguished guests and the world at large. Thank you so very much for attending this inaugural virtual fashion trade mission, exhibition and conference. The platform you are on today is an immersive 3D platform that was built with the customer experience in mind. Today, we promise you a hassle-free and enjoyable experience on this digital real estate. Here are a few housekeeping tips. In the lobby, you will be greeted by the songs of Soka. If at any point you wish to turn down the volume levels, 
You can adjust this on your device audio panel or mute the tab. In the lobby, you will see a floating carousel of the 11 designers across the walls, which is really a preview of some of their work. Please visit their designer booths in the exhibitor section to get to know them and learn more of their work. You are currently in the fashion showcase and here is home to the formal proceedings for the morning. There is an ask a question tab that gets your message to the speaker should you have a question. If the speaker is unable to respond to your question, you will, have, you will receive a follow-up email attending to your inquiry after the show. To exit the fashion showcase, please click on the lobby to enter the main exhibition lobby. Here you can go to the speakers panel to see our lineup of speakers. You can also click on program to see the run of show for today. After the formal proceedings end, you are highly encouraged to go and take a walk along the designer's exhibition alley and meet each designer. You have the ability to request a video meeting today or at a future date with the designer of your choice. You can do a live chat with the designer or request a callback. You can click on the videos to see their capsule collections or their signature lines. Brochures tell you a bit more and you can get up close and personal with any of the images on the scrolling carousel to the right by clicking on it to get more product details. We have put in hot links that takes you directly to any of the social media sites of each designer. To, to move forward and get back into the show, please remember to go back to the virtual platform and you can jump in to any of the hot links at any point. Come hear what everyone has to say about the fashion industry of Trinidad and Tobago and the wonderful work the team at Fashion TT is doing when you go to our testimonial section. You can see all announcements in the alert section and maybe we will do a giveaway or actually we will be doing a giveaway at the end of the day from Cardinal Services. Cardinal Services plan to give out two iPads to the most active participants at the end of today's sessions. Please enjoy the experience and we thank you for being a part of this. Let's meet our next speaker. Next. He is the general manager of client services at Export TT, Mr. Tanraj Hari Prasad. Everyone, um, honored to be here delivering remarks on behalf of Export TT, which is the National Facil Export Facilitation Organization of Trinidad and Tobago. As an organization, our mandate is clear to generate export growth and diversification in the non energy goods and services sectors. Among these goods and services, some of the most exciting, engaging, and globally appealing are our cultural and creative products, carnival, music, film, and of course, fashion. In December 2021, Export TT signed a memorandum of cooperation with Fashion TT, committing to provide funding, expert guidance, and general support on this project. We were keen to partner with Fashion TT on the OA Export Booster Initiative on this virtual trade mission, which will showcase some of our most talented and industrious fashion professional, professionals in Trinidad and Tobago. In 2021, the Export Booster Initiative was developed by the Ministry of Trade and Industry in collaboration with Export TT and the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association in a strategic effort to counteract the impact of COVID-19 on the manufacturing sector. The Export Booster Initiative is geared towards developing overseas markets and promoting exports. We see the export potential of our fashion industry as a massive one. For context, the value of global fashion exports is in the range of three trillion US dollars a year. In 2020, Trinidad and Tobago exports are just over 7.8 million US dollars worth of fashion products to markets here in Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as the United States of America and Europe. That figure represents 90% year-on-year increase in the, in the value of fashion-related exports generated in Trinidad and Tobago in 2019. A tremendous amount of work has been done by Fashion TT and our local fashion professionals to enhance our offering in the global market, and buyers have clearly been responding. Through our relationship with Fashion TT, Export TT is proud to support these 11 designers with our expertise and experience in export capacity building and connecting exporters in to business opportunities in viable markets. 
over the last three months, we have worked closely with fashion professionals here identifying potential buyers for their products and coordinating B2B calls between exporters and buyers. Rest assured, however, that the culmination of these months of work towards the BTM does not signal the end of Export TT support for Fashion TT and our fashion entrepreneurs. On the Export TT, there are a number of funding and market research facilities that can help fashion professionals expand their reach into new markets. For example, exporters can access financial support for shipping of samples through our co-financing facility and also um, our in-market promotion program that is due to be launched soon can assist um, our fashion designers further in promoting their products in these new markets. We'll continue to work closely with Fashion TT to ensure that exports are a core contributor to the success of Trinidad and Tobago's fashion industry. I believe by the end of this VTM, it will be clear to all that we are not just in the business of exporting dresses, shirts, and trousers. When our fashion products touch down in a country, we are delivering products imbued with a spirit of joy and reverie unique to our twin islands. We are exporting centuries of history experience that inform our cultural response to the world around us and manifest themselves in the art we create. The diversity of aesthetics, silhouettes, and influences represented in this virtual trade mission through this array of designers is an apt parallel to the melting pot of cultures that we celebrate here in Trinidad and Tobago. Expo TT is, a, is proud to be a partner of Fashion TT and a supporter of our fashion industry as we look forward to continuing uh, to support, enable, and empower fashion entrepreneurs. Thank you. Still to come is our panel discussion. But at this time, please welcome the chairman of the Trinidad and Tobago Fashion Company, Fashion TT's, Mr. Jason Lindsay. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'd like to recognize Senator the Honorable Paula Gopiskun, Ministry of Trade, um, all the members of our esteemed panel, and the media, uh, the designers, and everyone else who made this um, event possible today and contributed to it. Um, I just want to start, I just want to say a few short words uh, about the genesis of all of this. This has been the first thrust that the state has put behind supporting the industry back in 2015, 2014, 2015. And I think we have continued to grow and continue to organize the industry with a focus on harnessing the creativity of the uh, citizens of the country and converting that into commercial opportunities for the members of the sector, not just the designers, but all the way down the pipeline. We have, through the strategic plan over the years, we have been able to organize in a very transparent way the stages of the development of the designers and continue to support them uh, in a way that is that has context for them. Um, we have made, you know, I was very, very, um, always very happy to hear Export TT's contribution. They have been a partner with us in reaching the export markets and some of the other agencies, both public and private and, and, and um, non-governmental ones as well. Um, we have really come together in a way that has continued to see the uh, industry grow and the participants of that industry develop. Um, when we started this, we sort of canvassed the industry and uh, we had a chance to see where we are and what were the opportunities to really generate and track the commerce. Um, since then, you know, we have directly um, connected to and helped and supported the growth of over a thousand uh, designers and, you know, thousands of, of practitioners and students and, you know, everyone beyond that who supports the industry. So rarely for me to be here today, it really is a momentous occasion. And not just because we are finally pushing to what Lisa Marie mentioned is the pinnacle of the value chain investment program, which are the um, global value chain designers, but also because it's the context that we're doing it in. Um, I know that we all have gone through the challenges of the pandemic and we have seen how it has forced us to evolve in every aspect of life and 
with respect to fashion, uh, we have continued to find ways through the pandemic to evolve to let the designers continue to find new ways for commerce. And this is the this is an opportunity that uh, continues to be consistent with that. I mean, um, right now I'm attending a, a fashion week in the metaverse and understanding those new opportunities for designers um, in terms of both the digital space and how that converts to the physical space with regards to both fashion and commerce. And it's, it's very exciting. So for me, this is a very exciting time, um, a, a very exciting jump off for us um, for, to engage the designers and for us to learn as well how we can bring our creativity into a new space to have the audiences and to have buyers interact. You know, we're island. So any opportunity that we can reach um, an audience and to have people interact with our creativity, I think is important. So I'd like to thank everybody who contributed towards that. I mean, I'm very excited to see how it goes, but I believe that if we continue in this vein, it will only create more opportunities for the industry to grow. Thank you. This is the Trinidad and Tobago Fashion Company, Fashion TT, Virtual Fashion Trade Mission. To present to the present feature address, the feature address. Senator, Senator the Honorable the Paula Gopi School, Minister, of Trade, Minister of Trade and Industry. Good morning. I'm truly pleased to be a part of today's launch of the first virtual fashion trade show and exhibition being undertaken by the Trinidad and Tobago Fashion Company Limited in partnership with Export TT. Both of those agencies fall under the remit of the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Now, this initiative will showcase the beautiful aesthetic of 11 of Trinidad and Tobago's top export-ready designers enrolled in Fashion TT's Global Value Chain Program. And these designers include the individual aesthetic, the cloth, mailing, Charul Lochandas, Eva Jones International, J. Angeli, Claudia Pegas, the hideout clothing, Genesis Swimwear, Niha Karina, and Ecliff Eli. And in the build-up to the virtual fashion exhibition, these designers have been meeting with international buyers across various segments of the fashion industry. Over the years, their work has met with acclaim well beyond the borders of Trinidad and Tobago. The global value chain is an integral component of the Fashion Value Chain Investment Program and is designed to support participants in strategically penetrating regional and international markets for the purpose of boosting exports and revenues. And each GBC cohort will have the opportunity to participate in trade missions over a three-year period with the backing of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Today's virtual mission builds upon the Export Booster Initiative to increase the export value of manufactured goods and services. And this was established by the Ministry of Trade and Industry in collaboration with Export TT and the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association. Under the export promotion arm of the EBI, support is provided to small and medium-sized local manufacturers to enable them to penetrate new markets via their participation in virtual trade missions. And in this regard, the EBI has been able to successfully extend its support to designers who will be participating in this virtual trade mission. We are pleased to have on board Cardinal Services, a company based in Houston, Texas, led by its CEO, Dr. Sabita Singh, to establish international business linkages for this mission. The primary region of this focus is the United States, with attendees from Florida, New York, Atlanta, Los Angeles, uh, California, Minnesota, Texas, and New Jersey. And due to this mission being virtual, attendees are also expected from Canada, India, Belgium, Africa, and the United Kingdom. This event will be hosted on a 3D virtual conferencing platform, provided, providing an interactive 3D experience, displaying the products of our local companies. Design profiles will be available on the virtual exhibition platform designed to match the Caribbean aesthetics, welcoming guests with the sweet songs of soca music, and cultural images that showcase the identity and soul of Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago's National Development Strategy 2016-2030, also known as Vision 2030, has identified the creative industries of which fashion is a key subsector as an economic sector that can provide opportunities for expansion 
and achieve global competitiveness. We are encouraged by the performance of the sector. And during the fiscal period 2016 to 2020, the garment industry of Trinidad and Tobago generated exports of over $97 million. According to an article by McKinsey and Company Limited, the state of fashion 2022, the global fashion industry has faced exceptionally challenging conditions. And after nearly two years of disruption, the industry is beginning to settle and grow. And this growth is likely to be driven by the United States where the release of pent up demand has created spikes of so-called revenge buying leading to a growth spurt. And this virtual tra fashion trade show is therefore timely as it presents a platform for our local fashion designers to take advantage of this spike in demand. McKinsey and, and company also noted that consumers spend more time online and to capture these untapped value streams, designers should explore the potential of virtual fashion, which offers fresh routes to creativity and commerce. Stefan Larson, chief executive of PVH Corp, the company that owns Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger, believes when you see those exponential growth, and I'm quoting, when you see those exponential growth rates of consumer shifting behavior, you need to follow that, including the meta world, and to be open to how the consumer wants to engage and to be open to the possibility that it could soon rather than later become an income stream. In a crowded and disruptive digital market, the seasoned executive considers creativity one of the most important differentiators. I'm, I'm, like finish quote, I'm finish quoting now. The Wall Street Journal in an article on January 6th this year stated that successful brands have remained relevant by staying on top of the new and emerging trends and adapting to shifts in consumer uh, pre preferences. COVID-19 has accelerated digitalization and direct to consumer options, requiring new levels of operational efficiency and innovation for the apparel and retail industry. Fashion brands that had had more flexible and digitally enabled product to market processes were better positioned to pivot and get to the right product, get the right product to consumers as demand shifted. I would therefore like to commend Fashion TT and Export TT for the foresight and execution of strategic initiatives such as this virtual trade trade show, which allows local fashion entrepreneurs to bolster their commercial and export capability using online tools. In Fashion 2021, capacity development supported. Support provided by Fashion TT through the VCIP helped trans transition 57 designers to conduct transactions digitally by e-commerce platforms and 16 new designers commenced exporting their goods to markets such as USFE, the Netherlands, Oman, Dubai, Scotland, Germany, St. Lucia, the United Kingdom, Canada, France, Barbados, Mexico, Switzerland, Jamaica, Grenada and Antigua and Barbuda. Trinidad and Tobago's designers are prepared to transition from small scale export to larger opportunities selling to buyers, boutiques, agents, and large online retailers. Fashion TT has worked with designers over the past six years to ensure that their business operations, procedures, and processes are globally competitive. The 11 designers selected for the GVC program have been handpicked by an international expert panel based on their capability and capacity to compete in the international fashion industry. Interestingly, 75% of the top tier designers in this program have female owned and operated businesses. And these businesses are founded and operated by women and predominantly cater to women of all ages, shapes, sizes, ethnicities, and style preferences. And these brands ensure that women look good and feel good, whether it's in the boardroom or at the beach. The government stands ready to lend additional support to our female entrepreneurs through the She Trades Initiative, which was launched in October 2020 in collaboration with the International Trade Center. And this transformative platform offers in invaluable opportunities for Trinidad and Tobago's female-owned, micro, small, and medium enterprises as it promotes their inclusion into global supply chains, facilitates business-to-business -business and business-to-consumer linkages, 
and provides an income earning avenue for our enterprising women. It provides a pathway for business expansion, enabling final entrepreneur, uh, female entrepreneurs, including fashion designers, to receive technical training, professional mentorship, competing international tender and procurement processes, and attend international trade and business events and workshops. And the government continues to encourage our female designers to visit our She Trades website to find more about how they can benefit from this program. Also, the Trinidad and Tobago Bureau of Standards has developed a number of standards over the years to improve the quality of our fashion products, increase our access to international markets, and ensure that the local fashion industry can successfully compete in the global fashion market. And this is another plank of support to our local designers and garment manufacturers to achieve industry standards, which will provide their customers with added confidence. And following this virtual trade mission, Fashion TT will be launching its fifth fashion lookbook on March 30th, 2020, presenting 12 designers from emerging to the veterans in the industry. And to date, these digital lookbooks have promoted 116 designers locally and internationally through the channels of Caribbean Airlines, private sector partners, and our embassies, high commissions, and consulate generals all over the world. In closing, I wish to assure you that the government remains committed to the development of a strong fashion manufacturing base in Trinidad and Tobago, which is crucial for reducing the country's import bill, generating foreign exchange, and providing sustainable employment. It can also promote the diversification of the economy by supporting the growth of priority industries like fashion. Moreover, we are dedicated to forging strategic partnerships with the business community to create and sustain increased global competitiveness of local businesses. I wish you all a success in this venture. Thank you. And now we go to Houston, Texas to our next speaker. She is the State Officer for Texas and Vice President of the American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce. Here is Constance Jones. Good morning, everyone, honorable authorities and distinguished guests. It is my immense pleasure and honor to share in and be a part of this amazing event that's about to take place. I am super excited to see all of the beautiful fashions um, as the program continues. Again, my name is Constance Jones. Um, and as the um, announcer um, stated, I am the current Texas State Officer with the Black Caucus, as well as I am the Executive Senior VP of the Executive Board for the American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce. I'm here to talk with you and share just a little bit about the wonderful organization, um, the American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce. Um, the American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce was initially started in 2018. It is a nonprofit organization that promotes commercial relations between the Caribbean and the United States. We promote the development of small businesses and Caribbean businesses in the state of Texas. Our head office is located in the greater Sharp Sound area. And we also have additional offices in Dallas, Austin, and most recently in New Orleans, Louisiana. And we're looking to also expand in Miami, Florida. The chamber is overseen by the executive board, which I am proud to be a part of, as well as the board of directors. Our mission at the chamber is to promote growth and prosperity provide networking opportunities for chamber members to generate mutual benefits international and on a national level and advocate for the interests of the American Caribbean business community with all levels of government. We are definitely excited and we have had the esteemed honor 
to promote and interact with ambassadors, um, our local as well as federal congressional elected officials that we partner with for different business and community events. Um, one of the things that we offer, we're just not your ordinary chamber of commerce as it relates to business. We offer healthcare counsel, a pastoral counsel, as well as we focus on education. And I am proud to say, as one of the executive directors of the American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce, um, we, I spearhead the healthcare council. And what that healthcare council does, we reach out in the community and see how we can best serve and interact with the constituents. As far as on the business level, if anyone is interested in doing business with the American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce, I will list my information in the chat of how you can further get in touch with me and possibly become a member. What is ACC? American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce, it promotes the establishment of business networking between local and international businesses. Again, we focus on interacting with ambassadors, any other additional businessmen that want to do business, small business, especially just grooming and helping those small businesses, entrepreneurs that come on board with the American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce. As you very well know, Texas maintains its position as the nation's number one exporter, a title the state has held for 17 consecutive years. In 2018, a few years ago, Texas exported $315 billion in goods to destinations all over the world with emphasis in Mexico, Canada, China, South Korea, Japan, Brazil, and the Netherlands as its trading top partners for compelling reasons to do business in the Caribbean. The Caribbean region is a natural commercial partner of the United States, tied closely by geography, history, and culture. Second, it is the third largest market in Latin America for U.S. exports. Thirdly, free trade. And fourth, regional integration. Why should you join the American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce? I'll tell you why. Membership in the American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce means membership in a worldwide network. When you join the chamber, you are joining a worldwide network of trade and organizations that are working collaboratively to promote your business interests. The chamber is in constant contact with businesses and trade promotion organizations in the global area that informs the chamber of specific trade opportunities in different business sectors in the Caribbean and the state of Texas. The ACCC has numerous opportunities, as I previously mentioned, for you to be a part and that we offer within the chamber. Again, we offer a large variety of different councils that I'm quite sure can spark your interest or pique your interest. Highlighting business development as a major one. We have monthly mixers, networking business mixers, as well as we also service our senior community with monthly distributions and interacting with them. We are a community-based and family-driven chamber of network. We definitely partner up 
with not only the local officials to ensure that we are consistently in touch with our community, as well as different local and international businesses. The chamber offers several events, including our major signature event, which is the International Women's Soiree, which just took place two weeks ago. I am extremely proud that as a part of the American Caribbean Chamber of Commerce, we were able to honor over 20 international women, phenomenal women, that brings different diverse cultures, specialty areas, expertise. We honored lawyers, different women from all over. And it is something that I look forward to on a yearly basis. So who knows if you would like more information about International Woman being honored. We do it every year in the month of March where we honor our women for Women's History Month. I would love to hear about it. If you're interested, I will again leave my contact information in the box. And last but not least, I would like to offer my special thank you to Dr. Sabita Singh for inviting me to be a part of this amazing event. It is absolutely beautiful. I am honored that I was um, able to see all of the logistics, some of the logistics rather, of how she put this fabulous program into play. And it is now playing out today. Again, my name is Constance Jones. I will list all of my contact information in the chat box. I would love to speak further or collaborate. And I look forward to working in the future with Dr. Sabita. You have done an excellent job. Congratulations. And again, thank you guys. And I look forward to an excellent program. I pray away my soul to keep If I die before I live I pray away my soul to save Blow to this Laugh with your friends, make a joke to it I'd love if you say you feel some hope through it Don't worry about the hater cause they all clueless And when they had their chance, man, they all blew it Sold your soul and it wasn't even gold, Judas Nah, that's so foolish Asking me if I'm kosher and I ain't Jewish Misconceptions of reality And symbolism that they can't believe So wear your halo like a canopy And you can open up your mind like a canopy And be aware that you can't appease them Summer, spring, fall, yeah, all the seasons These hypocrites, they can't stand to reason Rather stick to the lies and deceiving Sometimes I feel like I could take A stroll through the park after dark, just me and my music, my dreams be all loose in my headphones on all the static I'm muted.
about to lose So let me tell you about real woman Don't do anything for a like on the gram Let me tell you about real woman Own house, own car, own land Let me tell you about real woman Boss up now, take charge of your man Let me tell you about real woman Tell them this your song Put your hand in a Then 
I jump Wherever she go, I go in Ain't no mountain too high Any river I cross in If she stay left, then it's left There ain't no second guessing When she wrong, she's still right She just want my attention Anywhere I go, I find myself back to you, yeah Love it when you ain't your darling, you lead the way, yeah Break up just to make up, you know that type of shit, yeah Hold your kisses, ransom till you have it your way, yeah I never had it like you, boo uh, Wet till it splash it too good Bad man in the fields is too zone Thank you, Madam Minister.
At this time, we'll cross the Atlantic and head to our next guest, who is standing by to present on the opportunities for TNT's fashion industry in China. Here is Her Excellency Annalisa Lau, Ambassador of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago to the People's Republic of China. I would like to acknowledge Senator the Honorable Paula Gopisun, Minister of Trade and Industry, the Fashion TT team, Cardinal Services, and distinguished speakers. A wonderful good morning to everyone present. It is my pleasure to speak at this inaugural event, celebrating Fashion TT's first virtual trade mission and fashion exhibition. This is certainly a win for the fashion industry in Trinidad and Tobago. Next slide, please. Today, I am pleased to present and introduce opportunities for the Trinidad and Tobago fashion industry in China, the power of e-commerce, a potential area for developing a niche market, and also the emerging trends and consumer behavior that support this potential niche. Next slide, please. Can we go one slide down, please? As the first major global economy to return to substantial economic growth following a record contraction in 2020, China's fashion industry has likewise rebounded to pre-pandemic levels. Retail malls have long reopened in cities from Beijing to Wuhan, and with global travel at a standstill, homebound luxury shoppers have been spending more than ever. A lot of this activity has taken place online, much to the benefit of major e-commerce platforms like Alibaba, owned Tmall, and JD.com, using innovative short video and live streaming commerce to bridge the gap between the physical and the digital retail world. Before the pandemic, of course, China had already outstripped the United States to become the world's largest fashion market reaching 121 billion US dollars in total annual sales in 2019. While China's economic buoyancy in the face of the pandemic has offered a much needed lifeline to foreign luxury brands, domestic brands have also made headway as consumers look increasingly inward. As competition in the market is fierce, with no shortage of choices for Chinese consumers, Foreign brands must tailor their market strategies to the Chinese markets, which are often categorized by higher incomes in larger cities like Beijing and Shanghai, to small tier cities with lower incomes to quickly identify unique value propositions that will resonate with Chinese consumers. Next slide, please. Owing to the pandemic's limitations on travel and mobility, Chinese consumers are choosing to buy more foreign goods online through cross-border e-commerce platforms resulting in booming sales and a much higher demand for imported goods last year. In 2021 alone, China's e-commerce market was estimated to be larger than the United States, the United Kingdom, Japan, Germany, and France combined. In addition, China's e-commerce sales in 2021 was approximately 52% of total retail sales, making it the first country in the world to have more online sales than traditional retail sales. Since the introduction of live streaming commerce by Alibaba's Taobao in 2016, revenues have skyrocketed, reaching an estimated 138 billion US dollars in 2020. Social media influencers have also proven their value um, in the live streaming environment and in some cases generating more sales in a few hours than department stores do in a whole day. Next, uh, next slide, please. Rapid urbanization, the increasing spending power of Chinese consumers and expanding markets for both luxury and streetwear contributes to increasing demand for well-made, creative, and unique pieces from various fashion labels. Current research and fashion trends in China 
indicate that Trinidad and Tobago's fashion industry exhibits tremendous potential. While the current scale and production limitations and of course the saturation of foreign competitors worldwide present numerous challenges to our fashion industry, the diversity and the boldness of the Caribbean palette and aesthetic provide a natural competitive advantage in which the industry can successfully capitalize in order to maximize potential and strengths in a highly competitive and dynamic industry. As we are discovering in most industries, economic recovery in the post-pandemic world requires strategy, innovation, and, and reflection. Research is showing that the fashion industry, particularly luxury brands, recognized the shift in consumer demands and started to reactivate product categories that were once dormant, but are now showing immense potential in 2022 and beyond. One such category is resort wear, also known as vacation fashion. Next slide, please. This demand for resort wear is predominantly driven by the evolution of the tourism industry, particularly post-pandemic. China has one of the largest tourism industries in the world, which offers a perfect opportunity for Trinidad and Tobago's fashion stakeholders to grow and of course to carve out a niche market of resort wear to satisfy the globalized generation of consumers who travel frequently. However, given the varying limitations in global mobility and travel that emerged from the pandemic, the tourism industry has evolved and undergone a major shift to not only accommodate current travel restrictions, but also encapsulate the needs and demands of travelers seeking a whole range of vacation experiences. Similarly, according to recent market intelligence, global luxury brands are also aiming to reevaluate their approach to vacation wear, as more traditional resort collections have no relation to the present reality and the aesthetic of today's tourists, and they're also quite dated. From the profiles of our designers and the collections displayed here today, the sophistication and diversity of the pieces that can also be classified as resort wear can target a diverse range of vacation experiences, from trendy beach wear to evening elegance. Sophisticated Chinese consumers are consistently displaying an appetite for newness and individuality, meaning that niche and emerging brands, very much like those seen in Trinidad and Tobago, are on the rise across China. With the incremental lifting of travel restrictions and the advent of staycations, the rise in domestic travel and the development of the stay-at-home economy, market intelligence shows that resort wear has immense potential in generating significant returns in 2022. Next slide, please. Anyone will agree that China is indeed an enormous market, and it can be overwhelming when thinking about market penetration at this stage. Given that our fashion industry is still considered quite nascent in terms of global outreach, it is crucial to not only be strategic, but to also make sense commercially. With these factors in mind, choosing the ideal markets that complements the product offering is paramount. Sanya, which is a coastal city located on the, on the southern Chinese island of Hainan, is often described as the Hawaii of China, and is comparable to popular Caribbean destinations like Tobago and Barbados. Due to its tropical climate, abundance of resorts, beaches, and tourist attractions, Hainan is also positioned to become a global tourism and shopping destination in 2022. Hainan is also one of China's special economic zones that welcomes foreign business and investment and prides itself on being a duty-free market for fashion and retail. Indeed, as travel retail and outlet malls in Europe and the United States become increasingly starved of Chinese consumers and where travel restrictions and even geopolitical strife have decimated destinations like Hong Kong, which were once favored by mainland shoppers, New hubs such as Sanya and Haiku in Hainan are attracting investment, business, and domestic tourism. Next slide, please. I wish to leave with you three main takeaway points from this presentation today, with the hope of fostering greater understanding of the Chinese fashion landscape. 
The stay-at-home economy also propelled a greater preference for e-commerce platforms to purchase foreign merchandise. The Trinidad and Tobago fashion industry also exhibits promising potential due to a competitive advantage that can be capitalized in China. The, thirdly, the post-pandemic evolution of tourism via staycations and the rise of domestic travel have increased the demand for resort wear, especially amongst uh, more sophisticated consumers in China. And well, lastly, actually four points, the similarities in culture, climate, and tourism offerings in Sanya and Hainan province offer ample opportunities for growth and demand of resort chic attire from Trinidad and Tobago. In closing, I wish to invite various fashion stakeholders from Trinidad and Tobago to get in touch with us at the embassy in Beijing, and we would be more than willing to facilitate discussions on how to approach and explore different opportunities in China in relation to the fashion industry. Thank you. Okay, let me share this screen. I'd like to share my screen with you. So let's see for the slides.
Thank you so much, Your Excellency, and to all our valued speakers. It's time for the first part of a panel discussion, which will focus on Caribbean fashion and the global fashion industry. We welcome our panelists. In London, Professor Andrew Ramroop, principal and founder of the Seville Row Academy, one of the leading tailoring schools in the world. And based in India is Dr. Maya Pradeep, CEO, Out Couture India and Miss Heritage India. It's over now to a moderator, the project lead at Fashion TT, Aisha Stewart. Maybe I should sing a song. Okay. I think Andrew can start. Please carry on this thing. Hindi or? Oh, sorry. English. Hindi or English? Yes. Soka or Calypso? Sorry? I'm waiting. We're waiting for the the moderator for that. Okay. Start. And I just wanted to say really that my my involvement in the global fashion mm -hmm. industry has been all. Hi, hello. Okay, I have now come up to join you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Welcome to our first panel discussion. It is truly pleasure to see you, Aisha. Honor. Yes, such nice, so nice to see you again, Dr. Pradeep. And it's such a pleasure and honor to be with both of you to talk about the global fashion industry and the Caribbean's place in it and the role of excellence really in separating and distinguishing yourself in the industry. So Professor Ramu, thank you so much for joining us. It's so lovely to have you. And hey, it's a very international panel. Somebody's from London, somebody's from India, and somebody's in Trinidad. So wonderful. <laughs> we're embodying what we're talking about. Uh, so the industry, the last two years has been very difficult for everyone with the pandemic, but that has brought a lot of opportunities for many in the global industry. And the industry has changed dramatically, a move towards, of course, the, the platforms, a greater focus on sustainability. So what are the opportunities that you both see that have emanated from this shift in the industry and what is the role and how important it is to be really excellent at your craft, excellent at your business, excellent in marketing, as you try and distinguish yourself in this new era. So Professor Ramroop and then of course, Dr. Pruitt. Oh yes, certainly. Well, thank you. Thank you, Aisha. Um, you know, I think um, perhaps my involvement has always been I've been teaching at the London College of Fashion, University of the Arts, from, for a very, very long time, so semi center since actually, and teaching at the Savaru Academy. And of course, I've taught in uh, Colombo, Sri Lanka, Mumbai, uh, Trinidad, and Tobago, um, here in London. And I'm off to Hong Kong uh, in May, uh, teaching the skills of a master tailor. So, perhaps most of my involvement has been quite apart from running a company on Savaru, Maurice Sedwell. It is that uh, training is a very important part of developing. We use the word excellence, developing excellence throughout the world, sharing knowledge and experience. Because as the global marketplace becomes smaller and smaller, and as industry becomes a lot more competitive, it is no longer for us here in the West to get cheap and uh, clothing made in, say, um, Bangladesh, places in India or Sri Lanka or China. It's as, as conditions improve in these factories, then uh, prices increase. And so no longer going to cheaper parts of the world. So this is where Trinidad and Tobago comes in uh, with the training that we've been doing in Trinidad to elevate the standards, to compete globally. And that's very, very important because as, as the other parts of the world become more and more expensive to produce, we've been doing the in the right way in Trinidad, train for the standards to make what we do globally relevant, globally valuable. And I think that's a very important part of training for the future. 
<laughs> okay, uh, may I? Of course, that's okay. Yeah. I shall, I'm going to answer your question uh, since I am the CEO of Haute Couture and Haute Couture is a buying and design house which works globally with uh, many, many fashion retail houses globally. Uh, yes, during the pandemic, uh, we definitely saw a uh, down uh, time for the fashion and the apparel industry and, uh, you know, many, many uh, suppliers in India lost money because of cancellations and many retail houses could not sell what they had produced. But And uh, so, I am today, you know, I'm so happy to see this virtual 3D disruptive way of showcasing fashion. It's definitely one of its first of its kind. And when everything is going virtual, I would say definitely why not fashion? I mean, during, we should have done the show during the pandemic so that, you know, there have been, yes. you know, purchases and business happening. So definitely virtual is the future. And I would say that this is a great innovative way and disruptive way because after seeing the few glimpses of the fashion garments and the brands that I have seen, my mind is already working how to reach a country as fast as possible. So, you know, because uh, there, there is a great opportunity. I saw some of some great fashions, resort wear, fashion wear, evening wear, and these, uh, as I'm talking, you know, from Indian point of view, this, there is possibility for a great collaboration with uh, TT and um, this kind of fashion show. Today, I'm sitting in the comfort of my home because it's evening in India and I am seeing great fashion and this is the future and uh, I, I think going off forward many retail brands also are working and talking about creating virtual fashion and uh, showcasing the collections so that customers globally because the world has shrunk globally due to the virtual way so people can buy and this will add to the business that's already ex existing which is online uh, you know offline so yes, I'm, I'm, yes, this is a great, yes. great innovation, and I'm sure it's going to be definitely take, you know, rocking. Thank you, Dr. Philip, and I agree. Like the in turn, the entire virtualization of the fashion industry has been incredible to watch and witness, and to be doing even something like this, where we are all three in completely different parts of the world yeah. and still be able to communicate, it's amazing and incredible. Yeah. And I would say, um, Professor Ramru, that you have also really used innovation in your teaching style. Because I remember when the pandemic first started, um, Professor Ramru was working with the government of Trinidad and Tobago teaching culture bespoke a level two course. And I thought to myself, how was this going to continue? Yet you continued almost seamlessly. Can you talk about how you use innovation in in your business, which is a what you would think as an older form of business, but yet you've used consistently use innovation and technology to advance how you market, how you teach, how you you even your construction. So can you speak on that? Yes, well, uh, I'd like to think we're more traditional than old. Um, I might be old, yes. uh, but uh, otherwise, <laughs> more traditional than old. But a very interesting question. Thank you for that question in regard to innovation as we grow and develop and become more and more 21st century and, and beyond. What we have been doing and what's been actually fast track our international learning experience. Currently, I have students in uh, nine countries teaching the skills of a master tailor online. So we've got in the region of 470 videos. And then I meet my premium students once a week for up to one hour, uh, communicating, inspiring, uh, critiquing their work, and having an overall rapport, not just in the craft of uh, tailoring and cutting and fitting and design, but also giving them entrepreneurial tips and uh, design tips and how they can develop themselves uh, wherever, whatever part of the world that they're in. And so that is how we've used um, innovation in, in our field of such art is online teaching. And so we've reached this, and this actually started during, during the pandemic. I taught the students in Trinidad online. And then we went international. And as I said, and now we're in nine countries. Nice. Yeah, amazing, totally amazing. And Dr. Pradeep, would you also kind of chime in on how companies, local companies, or even can, or even international companies, how they can be competitive in this 
current global environment because one thing about yes it's it's virtual so everything is the earth is flat as they say the earth is not flat everybody's everybody's customer but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that everybody's everybody's competition now so how can you distinguish yourself in this global framework so with the with the travel restrictions and with no uh, you know flights reaching previously it, it was like we going to the the customers uh, the 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 fashion retail houses and doing a presentation now the presentation is global uh, you know online uh, what happens is that designs are still designs now used to be have we used to receive couriers with the design sheets and all now it's by mails so we are going paperless there is an advantage there and then and you know we put we are putting more efforts to understand the designs without having the design sheets or even the fabric swatches what we used to get earlier by couriers so uh, of course there is a paperless uh, uh, working and then even we are going we are working more online talking to the designers and we also design as, as far as the global works be from india always provide fabric swatches and embroideries and design ideas and then the customer the other side collaborates with us on these ideas and then a design is created and the bulk production happens now anyways and even um, you know uh, after having all these designs now online and by mails we we found it quite effective in fact the last two years um, the business has been good and and working this way and we are saving we are seeing a saving of course uh, <laughs> this could be a minute saving in the fashion prices going high because the apparels are always high. you know though we are talking about sustainable clothing the prices never come down to the raw material so maybe this small small mini school savings are helping us save in some other form and another you know advantage that even inspections that we used to go physically uh, sometimes now we are asking uh, inspections for the goods that has to be exported we ask third party inspections to be because there was no travel so you know without an inspection we will never send the goods out because reliability still continues they are irrespective of pandemic or no pandemic so we used to take it up, you know help from the third party inspection services which was located in the area of the factory and that's how we inspected the whole goods and and work and export still happened but um, the new way of working is this and it's better that all of us get used to it uh, even design uh, you know designer can they, we have the common screen and you know we work on it and in fact i think there's a that's a great way because there's a lot of exchanges and communication happens and it really brings us closer understanding for the whole uh, design to be created which was otherwise by mail or by couriers and you know we you just understand what we understood but, but nowadays it's more exchanges and uh, about all, all there is more humanity and uh, you know because because of pandemic made us all very realize that all this could happen so there's more human touch to the whole uh, business now yes that's yes, really interesting what, it's very interesting what my has just said you know what we have done as a learning institution and as a business is that um, from Trinidad, I have actually been relating to customers in as far away as Nevada, whereby we did a video on how to take measurements and send that yes. video to potential customers. Customers are getting someone else to watch the video, take measurements, and then we send the squatches through the, the by post uh, and uh, take the, um, make the patterns and prepare the yes. fitting, record the fitting out. Then they send it back to Trinidad and we take it to an advanced fitting. And it's, so it's a little bit, it's actually, it's much cheaper than taking a plane to go out there by paying a courier service. And I have made exactly. suits in Trinidad for customers in the United States and still have a wealth of orders there from the US, which represents 30% of our business. Okay. That is incredible because you think these spoke like it has to be in person, but no, you have really revolutionized and adapted with technology and no, yeah. the people get, their customers can fit them, measure themselves and then get swatches. That is incredible. That is really, really, that's, really that's one of the That's one of the really innovative ways we've been doing business. You get DHL and FedEx coming to, to my studio uh, with much, much frequency. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. There, there is a way. And, and the interesting thing, it's that customers are responding to that because they understand it's a new way of doing business and traveling is a lot more challenging than it used to be. Yes, and also like because you have gotten used to this whole entire of being in your home, there's a comfort set. 
So you're also catering to their needs as well on a deeper level. Yeah, so your customer exactly. service is becoming even more refined. That is incredible. That's what Yes, and, and we are getting used to it. And there are a lot of advantages also. In fact, there are apps now that you could fit your, you know, if there is a collection and you could fit yourself into the collections and find which is the best for you. So there's another app and, and in a little more forward uh, technology than going to the, even the retail stores and or the brick and mortar stores, you know, you can sit yeah. at your home and, fit, uh, and see which is which garment or the apparel suits you best. So th <laughs> this is going all the way, everything virtual. So yeah. everything is changing. It, <laughs> yes, and it's here to stay for sure. Yeah, and that's the, that's the incredible thing. It's amazing, and what seemed like such a doomsday time of a pandemic, yeah. so many great opportunities, so many great innovations, so many different ways of conducting business have arisen. So our last question for both panelists is what one tip would you give to emerging designers, to designers who are looking to, are looking to move from their national base to their international customers? What is the one tip you would give them in this current, this current era? Angie? <laughs> 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 well, yes, what I would like to say, well, thank you, Maya, for putting me in Ina to do that. Um, what I would like to say, you know, I believe that uh, we've got to distinguish ourselves in, in some way rather than follow what others are doing. Just as I, I did a post this morning, it is to create a trail for others to follow. It is that you've got to be innovative, not only in the way you do business, but in your design, in your appeal. And, and your, you will appeal to your customers in a way that they want to, to wear and they want to purchase and they want to support you because you're putting your heart and soul into something that's very, very creative. In addition to that, I think we've got to focus very much on delivering excellence to our customers. And that is absolutely vital. That's one of the other edges that you can have. We've got as a business, we've made suits for customers in 60 countries so far. So we're pretty global in, in our marketplace. And this is what I'd like to see the Trinidad and Tobago art designs are, are practicing, not just thinking under your nose for business, but looking at a much wider audience. And, and what Fashion Titi and what Sibi is doing here is phenomenal. And I'm so impressed by, by this, this entire program. And congratulations and best wishes to everyone involved. Thank you, Professor. Oh, well, I, I, I would say that, uh, yes, I saw there is a great potential with the TT uh, fashion brands. I would insist on quality delivery on time and specs. Specs matters because every country has uh, their different specs. Uh, followed and, uh, and uh, what I could see is that I mean I'm so, I'm so happy hearing uh, you during the shows uh, the speaker before said that the the government is going to support the participants today with three year participation in trade shows and all that and that's a great way to connect with the world. Please, I would tell all the designers to participate in trade shows and allow even in your when you are having shows in your own country, call us. We would like to see what we can make for you because from India, it's a manufacturing manufacturing hub, labor is cheap and other around the world. Uh, but then uh, if you want to go global quality delivery on time and um, communication is great. So work on these arenas and participate in trade shows, uh, have exchanges, connect with, uh, you know, industries like us. And then even the embassy will connect you uh, for sourcing or even selling. The, the brands that I saw have potential to sell all over the world. The world is a small market. All you need to B is quality conscious, delivery on time and communication, and then you're there. So this is what is my advice to the designers and I'm then great, great show by these designers, amazing garments. Thank you so much, Dr. Philippe, and thank you so much, Professor. It was really, really just so awesome to just hear not only just a hopeful tone in terms of where the industry is going, but such a focus on innovation and being innovative and utilizing technology in the delivery of your business. And of course, excellence in customer service, excellence in, in yeah. delivery, excellence in quality. Really appreciate it, both of you, for being on our panel. Thank, thank you. Pleasure. Namaste from India. It was a pleasure talking to you all. Pleasure.
Hi, Honorable Minister Gopi Skoon, Your Excellencies, distinguished designers, speakers, delegates, guests, colleagues, friends. Good morning. Guten Tag. Buongiorno. Buenos dias. Zau an. Zau an. Sabah al Kahavi. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. And um, today I'm going to talk to you about the new customers, the people who buy your goods and um, how they are changing and why understanding them and exceeding their expectations would be key to success in the new normal. I want to say a very special thank you, of course, to the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Export TT, Fashion TT, Cardinal Services for to having me on here this morning, but also to say that you're doing a great job. Digital is definitely the way to go. Next, I'm from Levy Global, and our mission is to cooperatively elevate tourism, trade, and lives. We've been doing this all over the world because we believe that regenerative, responsible, and resilient development are a must in the new normal. Next. And of course, over 20 years, we have focused on innovation, regeneration, and trade. Um, we have provided innovative solutions to travel and to trade and lives all over the world, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, and of course, the Americas. Next. Fast facts, we can skip that and go on to the next one. What have we done? We have created responsible tourism for South Africa on behalf of the European Union. It was a post Mandela um, South Africa and we needed to do something very different. We've done the, um, the export strategy for Jamaica and we've developed the, 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 um, the claim run fast, live slow, looking at the markets. We've had the Bahamas develop the Chinese market in terms of a growing multi-billion dollar market that could be targeting to the to the to the chinese and of course one of the things the chinese love are the swimming pigs in one of the bohemian islands of course in montserrat uh, an island in the caribbean that was buried under a, a major volcano we helped them develop the volcano value chain and help them turn ash to cash and this has been a, a totally amazing experience as well. Next one, you could go a bit quicker. Of course, Abu Dhabi, helping them navigate from oil to tourism, considering of course that Dubai was the main game in town and you know Abu Dhabi wanted to know what was its approach and we have them. And one of the things of course we said is to be different, don't try to be another Dubai, focus on your rich culture, heritage and history within the Emirates. Of course, thank Singapore, we helped to develop their technology and competitiveness, and I, did, I delivered the Intellig Intelligent Island Public Lecture on Tourism and Technology many moons ago to help them really um, target and focus on technology. Today's presentation, we focus on the paradigm shift, the almighty customers and how they are changing, the demographics, the geographics, the psychographics, why technology is a master facilitator, and very importantly, what the implications are for your business. Next. So COVID-19 is the greatest opportunity of our lifetime. And of course, as, the, as, as our minister said earlier on, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's, it, it allows us to rethink, to reinvent, to reinvest, to do all of these kinds of things, to reimagine, to build responsible, build more resilient, to become anti-vagile, to innovate, to become inclusive, sustainable, and fair. And it, it's allowed us to really rethink. And it has accelerated a paradigm shift. It is not that COVID has created the stuff, but it has driven it to become much more significant. Now, a paradigm shift is a radical shift in thinking. Remember the days when finance was the be all and end all of the whole economy, and then came the economy, then came the society, and then came the planet. Well, hey guys, the planet is the essence today, followed by society, and then the economy, and then finance. So every 50 to 60 years, the world is driven by creative gales of destruction. This is according to Joseph Schumpeter. And as we can see, the world has actually been led by the first wave, the industrial age, the second wave, the age of steam power, the third wave, heavy engineering. And what's really important is to look at the fuel of these waves. It was cotton, coal, steel, oil, microelectronics, and the fuel of today is data. Data is the single most important fuel that will actually drive economic success for the future. Next one. 
Data is a new oil. And don't be surprised that the money follows the data. The revenue of the five data companies, it's in the billions and billions and growing. And why data is important is because consider that if you spend one minute on the internet searching or doing anything, the internet, Facebook and Google knows you better than your partner even. Now, what is the real business of Tesla? Do you think that Tesla really is in the business of making cars, making electronic cars, or saving um, planet Earth because of electricity? No. Tesla is a computer on wheels. It's the data that Tesla generates. And can you imagine from driving how many more data points you'll actually be um, using? So not surprising, the stock prices of Tesla is one 1,000 compared to Mercedes-Benz, which is less than $20. The money follows the data. Now, what's causing the paradigm shift? Let's see. Now, we have the customers who are driving it. The technology is facilitating change. The environment is providing limits to growth. You can see the future, Fridays for Futures, and all of these developments. Locals are very demanding. We are in the know, and we want different development. And countries are much more caring. The balance of power is shifting and customers are the ones calling the shots. We call them the almighty customers because they are the single most important influence on a company's success. You call them the buyers. They are the customers and they are radically changing. How are they changing? From the mass standardized customers, they're more authentic and individual. They are more, instead of being carefree, they're more cautious. From sun, sun, sea, and safari, they want to go beyond the beaches. Instead of being superficial, they want more intensive experiences. And those are just some examples. And of course, you have the whole idea of co-working, where people don't just want to come to your country. They want to live in your country, work in a country for like a year. Now, who are the customers of old? Now, these customers did not care where they went or, or how they got there. These are the customers of the future. And these guys paid a fortune to be tied up somewhere in the somewhere with some skirts and whatever else it is to have a stress-free holiday. Now, the only limit is the imagination. Of course, these are the digital nomads who want to work from everywhere. These are the customers of the future. Now, there are demographic shifts, geographic shifts, and psychographic shifts, which we will look at very um, quickly. Now, customers are getting older. Consider that 43% of all Germans will be over 60 years old by 2050. And in America, think about it. 65 adults who are 65 years and older count for 16% of the population, but 80% of COVID deaths. The moral of the story is that our market could be six feet below the ground. And the question for us is, are we able, ready, and capable to deal with the young and the restless Generation Z and the avatars? These are the questions for us. Now, let us look at the geographic shifts now. As you know, the emerging markets, China and Asia, are the new kids on the block, the BRICS, Brazil, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and the trade partners, are all, trade flows are moving also from west to east. China surpassed the United States by a mile. Next one. And of course, when we look at the growth of over 3% growth in GDP, they're all Asian, they're all the other ones. And this has serious consequences for us who have been traditionally used to to catering to Western markets that we've grown accustomed to. So we need to change. Now, Western markets, for example, what it's sans sans here, and I suppose sex, but Asian markets want something a little bit different. They want, also want S's. They want status, they want sightseeing, and they want shopping. We need to deliver what they are looking for, for example. Now, next slide. There are also psychographic shifts. The customers are more healthy. They are more health conscious. They look at what they eat. They, they are fast. They want to run. They want to exercise. They want to eat slow. They want to eat fresh. They want things that are natural. They want organic. They want authentic. And they want real, exactly what Trinidad and Tobago has to offer, for example. Now, technology is facilitating change. And how are they doing that? Next slide. The customers, as you know, in the driver's seat, but the technologies are important vehicle to understand target and reach your target your, and track your customers. Next one.
technologies are inherently disruptive. They're changing the way we look, book, eat, play, sleep, and everything. So that the largest store in the world has no buildings. The largest hotel chain in the world owns Airbnb, owns no hotels. And the largest um, taxi company owns no taxis. Just three down the road, yes. Next one, right. So in order to win Wu and Wow customers, you need to embrace and engage technology for sure. And very importantly, we need to we need to act. We need to we need to look at the new technological influences. For example, the metaverse. Consider that there are five billion internet users worldwide, and that's the size of our market, with over half in Asia. So we need to do that. The metaverse is here, and what's important about the metaverse is there's a whole new universe. It's a digital universe, a virtual playground. It's like Star Trek come to life except that you're in the movie, you can create any experiences you want, put on anything you want, do anything you want, play whatever you want. It's an entirely different ball game and we need to be ready for it. So if you look at the components of the metaverse, it's really about using a digital infrastructure to generate in the blue side, ultimate amazing experiences for the customer and for the client. We need to engage it and we need to look at it. And these are some of the avatars that our customers are, are looking at. Our customers create avatars that can dress in your clothes. Are we able, ready, and willing to, to don these, um, to dress our avatars? And the exciting thing about these avatars is that, you know, people may not have the money to afford like the Christian Dior, the Laboratory, so, but their alternative egos can actually be dressed in those Louis Vuitton stuff. Now, what are the implications for tourism, trade, and lives? Very quickly. We need to understand our customers and we need to use big data to get close to the customers, but we also need to recognize that there are fundamental cultural differences. And as an example, think about it. KFC also offers halal for the Muslim market and MAC um, offers a Maharaji mark because the Indians don't eat meat or beef, for example. We need to embrace and engage the technologies and seriously engage with the metaverse. And this is why I think that this this whole event is just exactly where it's at. We need to understand the Asian market because consider that we're looking at 5 billion people in Asia and $5 trillion in the next 10 years. We need to build linkages among tourism, trade, and the creative industries. We need to realize that tourism is not just a bed night. And this is why we actually launched an event called Levy in Tobago in the Caribbean because we wanted to integrate the whole, um, we needed to integrate fine art, fashion, cuisine, food, music, and culture in one total experience that is really and truly Caribbean with rum, rhythm, and integrate that with the tourism destinations. <clears throat> Next slide. You could just run through those quickly. So this is some of the things that um, fashion, culture, food, rhythm, art, fine art, and of course we need to innovate. And one of the innovations we've had in the Caribbean in the travel industry has been that. Don't forget the environment. We need to engage creatives. And this is why at Exceptional Caribbean, we have really launched a platform to, to, really, tra to really trade, exchange, promote everything that is exceptional about the Caribbean. Our stories, our people, our planet, our products, our services, Caribbean talent, destinations, locations, <coughs> and amazing experiences. Ultimately, we want the world to fall in love with the Caribbean. And we want us to fall in love with our own Caribbeaners because we are wonderful. And we honestly believe that what we have, the world really wants to buy. And these are just some examples of some of the exceptional location-based services that's uh, Villa being in Tobago. This one is, um, next one. Next slide. Exceptional talent you can find, exceptional products. In summary, the future of travel and trade is tech, T technology. <clears throat> we need to use and, and engage the technology. E environment, we talk about sustainable usage. C customers, creativity and community, and H humanity. Thank you, gracias. It's been a pleasure being here. And we certainly look forward to more. Thank you so much. The panel discussion continues now with guests, Mr. Richard Young, 
Creative Director and Fashion Impresario, and Dr. H.C. Lotus Riche, Founder and CEO of Lotus Riche Ignites, Coaching and Consulting. Our panel will now speak on Caribbean aesthetic and the building of Caribbean fashion businesses. It's back to a moderator, the project lead at Fashion TT, Aisha Stewart. Coaching and Consulting. Our panel will now speak on Caribbean aesthetic and the building of Caribbean fashion businesses. It's back to a moderator, the project lead at Fashion TT. Aisha Thank Stewart. You, Aisha. Hello, Richard. It's great Hello. to meet you again. Hi, Dr. Hello. Richie. Hello, Alicia Vieira. Good Muhammad. morning, Richard. Good morning, Dr. Lotus. Business. It's back to a moderator, the project lead at Fashion TT. Hello, Richard. Hello, Richard. It's great Hi. to see you again. It's nice being here. Glad to see you. I'm glad to meet you, Alicia. So I think we have a little lag. Maybe someone has a um, you know, a cell phone or something playing. So I think we have a little lag. But both of you look absolutely amazing. <laughs> so do you. I'm looking for um, Aisha. Okay. I think we're good. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. I'm not seeing Aisha. No, not yet. I think Aisha's coming. So while we're waiting for Aisha, I got to tell you, everything with this amazing fashion show is just brilliant. No, not yeah. yet. Cardinal Services, Fashion TT, and all the people around the world that support it. So while we're waiting for Aisha, it's no wonder that it's as brilliant as it is. I got to tell you. The fans, even on my show, all around the world, we have people just coming in from Japan, um, the Philippines, and all over the world. And you know what they're saying? We have never seen anything like this. How is it that Mr. Fashion Aesthetics himself, Mr. Richard Young, and Dr. Lotus Roche, and Aisha, hey, Hi. Aisha, how are you? Aisha. Hi. I was stuck. I was stuck. Outside in the backstage, like you know, nobody wanted to invite me to the party. What is this? And where well, is the you <laughs> to get here, lady. <laughs> so we're waiting for Alicia. But while we're waiting for Alicia, I must say I love, love, love speaking to both of you, Dr. Rache and Richard. Should I call yeah. you Mr. Young? But you know, I feel I'm, like you can call me Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mr. Young is a little um, dating the fabulous. Yeah. Yes, yeah. come on. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful being here with you guys. And I'm just going to start off with the first question while waiting for Alicia to come up. Um, of course. So, of course, we're going to ask one of my favorite people in the world, Richard. He is the originator of this term, Caribbean aesthetic. I mean, you hear it just kind of bandied about everywhere. Everybody's talking about Caribbean aesthetic, but nobody really understands the grounding foundations. What is Caribbean aesthetic and how are Caribbean designers unique in this global fashion arena? Well, my belief on the Caribbean aesthetic comes from a very centered and grounded and experiential space. Um, my awareness that our uniqueness is what we need to put to the front through cultural confidence to position us on the world market, you know, in order to sell, in order to merchandise, we have to do it efficiently, expediently, effectively. And therefore, we need to find what our competitive edge is. Our competitive edge is because we are booted in this part of the world and we have been crafting and forging a way of survival um, that has become our lifestyle. So in the costuming of our lifestyle, our Caribbean aesthetic plays an insignificant role because we are doing it in our way. 
we are doing it the ways that feel comfortable to us, the ways that are natural to us, the ways that are indigenous to us. So therefore, we are using innovative, ingenious ways to style ourselves. So I have always believed that the way for the world to take us seriously is not to join the bandwagon of what exists, but to add value, to add to the template in order to, to, to attract the fashion arbiters and the cognoscenti. Um, and to follow in the, in the parts of trailblazers like Professor Andrew Ramroop, who has impressed upon the world that excellence can come from this part of the world and that we have style embedded in our soul that we can impart onto garments and onto costumes and onto wearable art. And so I am very exhilarated to be in this space where this thing that I have been calling the Caribbean aesthetic for 30 years is now being crafted and styled and put into a virtual, virtual trade mission. And I was really honored and humbled to be given the assignment of crafting the stories videographically and photographically to sell this branding because we are so eclectic, we're so plural, we're so cosmopolitan. So and I could go on about this syncretic life culture that we have that we can use in our merchandising. You know, so the term unique selling perspective, selling position, selling proposition, selling point, we have it. We have it. And we have to put it to the front burner of our seals in moving forward to make us sustainable, viable, and saleable. So thank you so much. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Sustainable, su sustainable, saleable, and viable. I love, love, love that. That is exactly what we hope to do in, in the region and in particularly in Trinidad to make with our fashion designers. And Dr. Roche, now that we've been talking about this Caribbean aesthetic, we've, we've, this is the second time we've really been interacting with Richard on this Caribbean aesthetic. Uh, how can designers fit that Caribbean aesthetic into developing and crafting their unique selling position? Because it, it's part of our DNA, but it's each and every one is unique. And how do they use that in their business and developing that unique saleable thing that will help them distinguish themselves? Well, let's talk about fashion and, 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 and understand what that word fashion really means. It's, it's been expressed that fashion is a self-expression and autonomy at a particular period or place in a specific context and, and really time because what I might wear today, I might not wear tomorrow. And let's face it, fashion changes from day to day. And one of the ways that people can really, really, really have that aesthetic is just be true to themselves. Just be who you are. You know, we've heard this cliche, if you will, to thine own self be true. I found that when we are true to ourselves, to where we've come from, it helps pave a stronger way forward to where we're trying to go. And so it's unequivocal. Wherever you're from, no matter rich, poor, no matter if you speak English, if you speak Spanish, whatever language you speak, wherever you're from, male, female, however you show up in the world, however you show up in the world, you have to be true to yourself. And fashion continues to open its doors to people who want to continue to just be who they are. Let's face it. The fashion industry itself is about a $2.5 trillion industry that touches everybody on the planet. And it's even been expected by statistics that it's going to rise above $3 trillion by 2030. But the only way it's going to happen is if designers, if fashion moguls, and everyday people just like you and I just be true to themselves to their own aesthetic, because fashion is not just what we think about, it's what we become. Many of us are walking billboards. And so the first things first, how you come up and how you show up has to start from within, but it has to start from a foundation of truth. Thank you, Dr. Ishii. Wow, wow, very extremely powerful. And Alicia, so, Alicia is uh, really an expert in digital media, digital marketing. How can fashion designers use digital media and use digital marketing to expand their reach? Definitely. So, I mean, um, we at Guardian Media, um, we are very um, delighted to be part of this movement. This is absolutely um, 
it's it's new, it's fresh, it's innovative, and Guardian Guardian Media has been around for 105 years. We've been in existence for 105 years, and we pilot. We are the pilots of the largest and most robust multimedia operation in Trinidad and Tobago with an average da average daily reach of 3.7 million. Now, Richard was talking about getting to getting to your customer and how do we market the business? And this is where we this is where you do it. We this powerhouse that is Guardian Media incorporates the Guardian newspaper, both print and digital, CNC three. We have seven radio stations across Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana, and we have the big the big board company, which makes it the most comprehensive media company in the Caribbean. And with that being said, we are a publicly traded company, which I hope everybody here show shareholders do. But when it comes to the Digital Guardian, um, we are the most subscribed digital paper across 50 countries, especially among the West Indian diaspora in Toronto, New York, Florida, Houston, and London, providing credible, credible and verified content aimed at keeping the diaspora fully connected. And that is very important. We are scattered throughout the globe. And without that connectivity to our roots and staying connected and exposed to our people, our food, our fashion, um, we are not going to be able to, to be true to ourselves, as Dr. Richie just said, you know. Another way to drive this home, there's some, we have the uh, We Empowerment Magazine, Women's Empowerment Magazine. It's a leading publication under our umbrella of products that is dedicated to creating content that promotes not only local content, but local female entrepreneurs across all the industries, including the fashion industry. So with regard to digital and corporate and moving the fashion industry forward, it is a matter of dedication, not only from the, from the public sector, but also from the private sector. And this is where GML comes in. So definitely we are waving or we are supporting and pledging our ongoing and unwavering support in, assist, in assisting both the existing and the upcoming designers to highlight their, their, their craft and surpass their business goals. So that really, it has to be an amalgamation of not only the people, but all of the kind of the stakeholders, and we have there is the digital plat the digital platform in order to take the business forward. Thank you so much, Alicia. And as we, the last panel was was discussing, this whole new digital framework, this digital era, is here to stay, and it's really how our designers have been throughout the pandemic it's how they grew their businesses many grew their businesses because they transitioned online and had right. to really connect with their customers in a different way and it's amazing that guardian has guardian media and guardian digital has this large footprint particularly in diaspora communities which is a key right. market for many of our designers right. so that's awesome thank you so much Alicia. you're welcome and I just want to ask a question for Richard and, of course, Dr. Rishi. Um, in this era, this, this, we are in a very amazing moment where there's a recognition of the importance of different elements of society, whether that is your minority groups, whether that is female-based businesses, whether that is focusing on the environment. There's so many things that are just become very critical in this this moment of time. How can fashion designers really leverage these talking points and not only just to be part of the conversation, but also to build from that conversation to attract customers, to build business, the whole thing. Dr. Rishi, go ahead, because I've seen Richard's giving me a face. <laughs> He's putting together his brilliant thoughts. <laughs> the she put me in the hot seat. So, so I, I want to say that it is unequivocal that in order for us to come to a common ground, we have to really identify where we are with things and what makes us stronger together and what makes us different because it's our differences that really help us to be better. I think I shared with uh, you the other day, we had a conversation on my show and I talked about when I was living and working in Japan. I noticed that a lot of the trends that Japanese persons had were from the United States, but not just from the United States. They, they were taking bits and pieces from all over the world. And so again, that lets us know that no matter who we are, no matter where we are, we have to show up. 
And I think those discussions need to be had. We need to come together and really look at our differences and say, well, yes, this is different, but how can this impact us when it comes to fashion? Because every, every country, every culture and every tradition brings a fashion sense that is really their own. Yet, when we embrace it on a global level, like we're doing today, okay, we can change the millennium, not just where we are today, but also where we're going to in the future. But the conversations have to be had. We have to really realize that we are stronger together. I totally agree. Yes. I love that. I love that we're stronger together. Go ahead, Richard. I, I was just being polite and gentlemanly and allowing the lady to go first. <laughs> I, you know that this thing is dear to my heart and my tongue can yes. rule out of my head yes. here because I'm given the opportunity to speak what I've been speaking for decades. The most important thing is identity branding and emblematic, iconic people like Jeffrey Holder and Peter Minchel who have set a blaze and awareness that Trinidad and Tobago style is so important to the melting pot that is the Caribbean aesthetic. Um, and those kind of trail bleeders, bleeders made a mark. So people are aware. We have to use this awareness and parlay it into a monetized situation. So we have to be just like the chambers in Paris and in Milan and the British Fashion Council. Part of their agenda is the identity branding. You have to claim the space from which you are to be able to sell what you do. You know, so you can't just be making clothes to cover naked bodies. You have to be making clothes that belong to some kind of uh, deity, as it were, and that's what I call my Caribbean aesthetic, and apply to it, append to it, appeal to it, represent it so that you have an edge and you don't just join the plethora of other world fashions that are in the other metropolises mm -hmm. and that we are contributing something, etching a notch on the totem pole of global style. So when we do that and we become aware of it, that is the confidence that begins the sale. The sale has to come from the confidence of what you're portraying and what you're giving. You can't sell, it will be putting the cart before the horse if you don't have identity. If you put, if you are only studying where you're going to position a thing and where you're going to mass produce, and more so because we are niche market people. We are slow fashion. We are artisanal style. We have to find relevant requisite spaces with people with that alignment in the brain to, 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 to absorb it. And the other part about it is one of the things I celebrate being a creative in the Caribbean is that the word pivoting came up in this era of the pandemic. Creatives have been pivoting forever. We have to reinvent ourselves daily to keep relevance. And that, that thing is something that, again, we can create as a template for the world to follow. Because when you come from this, this multicultural space that we are in the Caribbean, we have to find unique ways almost on a daily basis to be sustainable. And that pivoting, that finding a way to make yourself economically viable, as well as to make a stamp on the collective experience of being of this part of the world, it's really, really a, a, a celebratory thing because we can identify our similarities, you know, but we must celebrate our differences and position ourselves strategically for us to benefit in a lucrative, profitable way. Wow, Richard, that is that is well said. Well, well said. Like, I was actually going to ask something about how the how can Caribbean designers leverage the Caribbeanness in the international markets and look you just answered it without me even asking it because it's so innate and inbred it inbred in what you do and what you have been talking about for 30 years since you came out your mother's womb that is what you've been talking about so i really thank you but and we are over time so a teeny weeny bit over time so i'm gonna wrap up this session but it was so wonderful speaking with all of you awesome just incredible just understanding about caribbean uniqueness caribbean aesthetic and how do we transition that into our designs and in this new digital space so thank you so much for coming and we well we thank you so much for everyone this is the last panel for the day so we thank you so much for joining us on this inaugural virtual fashion trade mission and expo it has been an absolute pleasure to be here thank Hi. you very much pleasure thank you. as well thank you so much
Hello, hello, hello. Thank you, everyone. You know, I want to say a big thank you to all the speakers, distinguished minister, and all our guests from all around the world. Thank you for being a part of the formal proceedings. At this point, nothing gives me greater pleasure than introducing you to my business partner and co-founder of the technology that is bringing this fantastic event to everyone all over the world, my business partner, Abhinav Jain, co-founder of Amon Solutions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Dr. Sabita. And uh, I've been listening to a lot of the conversations that were happening. I see that you have with this event, Fashion TT and Carnival and, you know, all of your supporters have created a revolution that people did not even imagine coming before. And that's a very big thing because so far people were saying, okay, I am attending an event or I'm just, you know, probably joining a, a small, you know, a conference on something with the platform that, you know, uh, your team and our team and we all together for the last couple of weeks have been working has come to a great, great conclusion. And that's super proud for me. So congratulations to all of you and the team. Initially, I thought I'll share some presentation and all, but I want to actually stay away from them and would like to share a few insights about how this entire platform has come to a picture and why it is important and why we think that future belong to this. So um, I have been a technologist for 17 plus years, worked with companies like SAP Labs, one of the largest, you know, uh, a magnificent, the greatest company in the world. Started my career with SAP, worked with Dell, Citrix, and then went into consumer experience technology side for JetBlue Airways in the US. Worked with them as a business partner and then worked with two, some of the brightest technology startups. One which was recently acquired by a Silicon Valley group called Place IQ. And another is one of the largest small and medium businesses, money lending you know, platform called on deck capital again, both were in the U S and what I realized that end of the day, simplicity wins. It is not about how grand your platform is. It is not about how grand the people are that matters, but what truly matters is that how beautifully you can capture the consumer experience, the customer experience and the buyer experience, which is what we started building as part of Armand. So Amund, as we all know, stands for activating the last mile on digital. And when I say last mile, it's not the mile which is disconnected with internet. It is the last mile for a brand which could be a consumer, for a fashion designer could be a buyer, for a you know a medical representative could be a doctor. So they are true last mile. And then when we talk about Vertex, Vertex came out of um, you know a immediate need during COVID which was not the first time we heard even before COVID in 2018, we hosted Dr. Sabita, one of the largest uh, virtual conference in the country where approximately 200,000 people joined, connected with 200 plus member of legislative assemblies to the chief minister of one state, one of the largest state that time in the country. And we felt proud that from there, now we have one of the you know most beautiful 3D immersive platform. And I am so proud to be part of this entire revolution that Fashion TT, Cardinal, and all of your supporters have created. I want to must, you know, just thank you for your trust, for your support. And I wish you all the very best for all our future endeavors. And with that, I would like to once again thank you for hosting me and having me on this forum. Over to you, Dr. Singh. What can I say? This is one of the most modest guys I've ever met in my life. You know, Abhinav, my team in India, you know, our team, our team in India, the team here in Houston, the team we worked with in Trinidad. We just want to thank you guys for everything. We could not have done it without you. You know, thank you for making this a great experience. Now, I'd like to invite everyone to exit the fashion showcase and go back either into the lobby or take a stroll into the designers' areas. Go meet our designers. They're waiting to talk to you. They're wait waiting to show you what they have. The formal proceedings are over. The exposition has now begun. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fashion TT. Thank you very much, Export TT. Thank you very much, the Ministry of Trade. We thank you for the audience, and we thank you for all the foreign dignitaries. Please enjoy the show. <laughs>